Hey guys, it's Jamie here and we're going to do something a bit different today. Here I have a blank canvas that is 8 by 8 or 20 by 20, 8 by 8 inches or 20 by 20 centimetres. You can also, from thrift shops, pick up an old canvas quite cheaply and just paint over it because we're actually going to use the reverse so the old ones tend to be better finished over these edges. What I'm going to do initially, and this is just to get a base down, is using a gel medium or Mod Podge, put some book pages and wrap them around this, all around all the edges and the base. I'm hoping by doing that we'll be able to pull this edge in a bit. feel like it's lifting anywhere just get in there and push it down. You'll need to cover all your sides, the inside of the frame and actually this back surface as well. I'm still developing a plan for this but one thing I will do is get some white gesso. The brush is quite wet already because I want to make this quite translucent we're going to brush it all over so that you can still see some of the scripting through. I'm beginning to form some kind of plan. The next thing I'm going to do is actually with the black ink that stays on is do some printing over this background. So here I've got a simple enough grungy background stamp. Okay, and then I will want some others. I have some script. This is where you definitely get messy. So just keep going with the stamps to fill in the gaps around here. I have two Distress ink colours here, Antique Linen and the espresso oh i think i probably want the vintage photo more than the espresso let me just grab that i'm going to start with the lightest and i'm not looking for even staining let me get some water on this because i'd like a stronger color Let's see if i can get it to be a bit stronger we will try some vintage photo i knew this would go on darker because it's the furniture pad not the soft sponge probably should just use furniture pads on all of them. Let's give it a blast. Much better. I'll dry this off and see if I can get a stronger antique linen if I change the pad to these furniture ones. Bit of an experiment but let's see if we can get a stronger result out of the antique linen using these furniture protection pads. Or is it the same? Seems stronger. Yeah, it's definitely stronger. Well, that's interesting from a user point of view. Don't bother with the correct stuff, do the cheap stuff. Put some espresso on. Oh no, grunge queen. Love a bit of grunge. I need to get something that means I can get in here. So I think that will be a sponge or a brush. I've got a brush with a lot of green on it. Don't suppose it matters too much. Need to get some staining in this bit. I might have to run the water so it takes that down a bit. See if I can do that and run it into those grooves. I shall keep playing with this until I get some of those edges stained. Now we have a sanding block and we're going to take some of this off. We want to create a very worn paper look. I'm genuinely having fun. Okay. Any loose bits you can just grab and tear at and pull even more off if you want. Fantastic. Well satisfying. Edges are okay. Maybe a bit more on this one. Brush it off and give it a matte medium glaze. 
This has had a layer of the matte medium put over it and some talcum powder to take off the stickiness. I now have some gold acrylic. If you can see that, I'm just going to inside of the frame, but it might take a couple of coats to get the effect that I'm looking for. So up to the edge and try not to do what I've just done then, which is actually get the back of the canvas. I will, like I say, end up doing at least two coats of this. The inside has now been painted gold quite thickly. I did several coats in the end. These are bits of napkin where I strip off the ply. These are the spare ply. What I'll be doing is getting my matte medium or Mod Podge depending what you've got. I've mopped up the spare gold. Now I'm going to gently run the matte medium over this so that we create a vellum. Ended up putting a couple of coats of the matte medium over the top of this to plasticize it. It's not as firm as I normally get with Mod Podge. I'm going to keep one lighter. This one I'm going to use some vintage photo wet to dye it. Throw some water on that. On the side that I scooped up the paint with, I will now scoop up the vintage photo. I think that's plenty grungy enough. Now we need to decorate it a little bit. So I have a script stamp here and I have the Memento, which is the permanent ink stamp. Got it in Espresso. To give it some scripting. We're still working on the background. Ah, <laughs> oh dear folks, oh dear. Okay, I have some fake old paper there. I have some handmade paper, so you've got all the fibres that's been torn up to reveal fibres in different colours. I have some coffee stained paper and I have a jelly print that I've done. And now we just want to arrange something onto here that might look reasonable. Remembering this is not our focal point, it's still just part of the background. Not going to stain things because I am going to come in with some white gesso. Let's get some matte medium. We will be going around the edge of the frame as well. May use less on the edge of the frame. I'm not 100% on what I'm doing. Just know that I want more texture, more interest in this background. Don't know if I need this as big, whether I just want a little bit of this somewhere it's very similar isn't it considering one was a jelly print gel print done jelly printing i don't even know what it's called done oh, three four months ago you can see you've got book page showing through you've got this old-fashioned handwriting I might put in that corner this was what i was interested in particularly for this frame was bits of this now it's not going to tear as easily because it's got the matte medium already on it. Until things dry, you can't really tell whether you've had an effect or not. It's just whatever you feel like you want to add something to add to the interest level. Let's just bring that down a bit because, oh, I could go that way. I might let that dry because I do want to sort of dry brush some white over. Then there might be more bits that we want to add. I might even be doing a bit more sanding. We have some white gesso and I think we're going to come in and smudge over some of these darker pieces. And then over this bit. It's all lumpy and bumpy and all sorts going on here, but that's exactly what we want. I may stain this though. 
back with the sanding block and to break through some of this I'm peeling things off again we'll be gluing it bits down let's brush some of this off back to I don't even know what number of matte medium coats this is where we've roughed this up and we've got lots of crumbly bits I have been over this with a damp cloth which obviously took some of the white off as well but did help get some of the dust away you can keep building layers and layers and layers and layers on this and sanding back as much as you want when you sand back you won't get everything off so each time you do it you're building just more interest I am going to leave mine at this level now we have to look at what's going to go inside here I have been slightly delayed by a day because I've changed my mind so the work I did yesterday has been wiped and I'm doing something different. I have this image from the Bohemian Dreams kit, which I need to cut out, but it's been placed on craft card and some matte medium's been put over it. Using the matte medium, I'm going to use some of the paper we created earlier to go over this central focal point so that it better matches the background of the frame i don't want too much gold going over her face i'm trying to find a bit that will be interesting but we should still be able to see her underneath it of course if i'm not happy with the result it's easy enough to print her up again and do something different to create the bit that's going to go in the center of here what I'm going to do is actually build it on a separate base and then put the base in and that's simply because if I don't like it then I'm not directly gluing onto the frame and suffering the consequences of that I'm simply going to cut these two pieces of craft down put them together because they're going to be covered up the base has been made I'm going to take some coffee stained material and put it over the whole base so again using the matte medium to do that and you can see that I've ripped at the edges and I'm leaving the crinkles and wrinkles in I have off cuts from where I've ripped it to get the frayed edge look I have this piece of hessian type material that i used to get rid of some excess uh, white gesso which might do something with this i'm not sure yet i think i might cut it down though if we're going to into more smaller pieces if necessary you can come in and just pull up fibers be careful of your fingers here are some of the bits i've gathered up so far and then I have these sticks as well that can hopefully be broken and placed around. Put all this together. I'll be using the Uhu. Because this is going onto the frame and will be protected by the frame, you don't need to glue everything perfectly flat. You can simply secure and it will give you a more three-dimensional look anyway. And we had all these sticks. They're gonna fit along that bit. I did say some things may or may not work. I started to sand this back before, because I felt you couldn't really see the face and it hasn't worked. So I'm gonna print up another set. I have a huge amount of beautiful images to choose from. 
but the one that catches my eye is this one. I have cut this smaller than the original picture, so it's in a square, square rur shape. It's not a perfect square. And it's been coated with matte medium and backed on the craft card to make it stronger. Because the surface is now protected, I'm going to create a frame for the picture using a damp Stabilo 8046. We want it smudgy. When it's on, smudge it in. It'll probably take a couple of goes to get the strength that I'm looking for and the smudge out. While that dries, and I do think that looks really pretty, we can sort out the base. This is now all together and we want to just put it on into the box frame. To do that, we're going to use the Uhu, our nice strong glue. It's an all-purpose adhesive. We want to make sure it doesn't ooze onto the frame. Which way do we want it? I think with the thick one at the bottom. Yeah, it doesn't have to be centrally lined up. You don't really need to see me glue bits of paper. To With any scraps of paper I find, I will cover the whole thing. With the little matchbox, I covered the ends using some of the offcut from the stained napkin. With this, what we will be doing is adding some Velcro dots. So we have the opposite ones in the center of our box, put a dot, and we'll be putting the opposite dot on top of that. And then taking our picture, that would go on there. We want the box to go in here. Before we put the box in, we can put a treasure inside the box. The treasure can be anything, something to remind you of the year, a word, for example anything you want it to be. That is our ode to junk journaling. It's movable but that's okay. That is our box frame using a printable from the Bohemian Dreams kit, some twigs, some scraps of material, stamps, bits of paper. Personally I think it's pretty cool. If you've enjoyed this video, please do all the youtube -y things. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Check out our Facebook group in the details below. I'll be back very soon with a normal junk journaling tutorial. Until next time, bye.